Hey, hey, how you doing? You know what? You made the right choice. You pressed play. Thank you for joining the Suns Jam Session podcast once again. I'm your co-host, John. You can find me at Darth Void on Twitter. And I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, my fellow co-host, Matthew. Matthew, how are you doing this evening, my friend? Great. What's up, beautiful people? How are you guys doing out there, huh? Everybody doing I, great? I hope they're doing fantastic. Well, kind <laughs> of. Not really. <laughs> how are, how are, are you, my friend? I'm fine. You know, I rushed. I didn't have time to put on makeup because ah. I just got walked in the door. You know, we're a little late today because of me. I did not have time to put on makeup, so I apologize to everybody. Matthew, you didn't see the makeup person. Well, you know what? You're still looking fantastic. I'm sure all the jamsters out there appreciate it. Uh, I'm I'm doing okay. Thank you for asking, by the way. Oh, you're doing it's, all right. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a weird day. It's another weird day in 2020. I think that every day we're trying to find a new way to just try to feel completely weirded out as possible. Uh, yeah. The NBA obviously isn't playing any of their – three playoff games today in pro in protest of Jacob Blake's shooting in Wisconsin. I know major league baseball is not playing some games as well. So, you know, it's just another reason why 2020 sucks. Obviously I'm not somebody who has uh, a voice on everything that's going on when it comes to racial and social injustice. Uh, I'm just a, a lowly Suns fan uh, who is trying to navigate a pandemic as well. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, I wouldn't so far as to to say that, or I wouldn't go as far as to say, you know, that the NBA season might be canceled. But it's something that they're talking about. Did you hear any of that chatter today? Yeah, yeah. So I did. So I'm keeping Twitter open because I know like there's been stuff released recently. Just there's going to be a season anymore, and it's up to the players. It's really up to them. Uh, they took a stand today and they didn't play. So good for them, and we'll see where this goes. Um, right now, the last thing I heard was. Basically, it might be in jeopardy. That's the last thing I heard, but we'll see what happens within the next hour. I'd say within the next hour, two hours, we'll probably know what the rest of the season has to entail. Don't you think? Yeah, I think the we'll see what's you know coming down the pipe and whether or not they're going to continue playing the NBA season. Uh, again, you know, it's just kind of a it's a sad time in America. It's a sad time. Uh, you know, I know that we have a lot of listeners over in Malaysia and Australia, New Zealand. You know. I don't yeah. know how everything's going down in your country, but things are pretty fucked up here in America. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to stay as positive as possible, though. You know, we got the Phoenix Suns to talk about. We're going to be talking about restricted free agents and kind of navigating those waters on not only the Suns free agents, but free agents of other teams that are restricted that potentially might come on the market and who we should be targeting there. Uh, we're going to do a little prospect review over a couple more of those prospects that we're interested in for the Suns to take once the October draft comes around. And then we're going to do kind of a, an overreaction corner, if you will. Will. when we talk about yeah. a lot of different things that are going on in the NBA and we're just going to overreact on them because we're Suns fans. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple podcasts, or if you're watching on the YouTube channel, uh, make sure you just press that little subscribe button. We appreciate it. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suns Jam. You can visit Suns Jam Session at uh, sunsjamsession.com. You can email the show, sunsjamsession at email.com. And you can go by redbubble.com. If you actually go to redbubble.com, you'll see that we have some different apparel that we have there. We have our Eight No shirts. We have our Suns Jam Session podcast shirt. And we have our uh, Ricky and Devin and Mikkel and Cam and DeAndre shirts that we have on there. So that's redbubble.com backslash people backslash Suns Jam Session shop. So we appreciate anybody stopping by there and, and taking a look at what we have there. Uh, again, weird times in America, but I'm going to reach for something that's red, white, and blue, Matthew. You ready for this? What you got there, man? I got PBR, man. Some red, <laughs> white, and blue yeah, PBR. Is blue. This is what sure I'm going to be going with during this podcast. Uh, thanks for everyone for hanging out. Let's pop open this beer. Ooh, that sounds so nice. And uh, let's kick it off, man. Man, that music just gets me jazzed up and ready to go, dude. <laughs> Every time, dude. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. It just gets Great me going, man. <laughs> Beats by Voida. All right, so let's talk restricted free agents, man. Uh, the Suns, obviously, yeah. we have a couple of restricted free agents that we have going into the 2021 season. Uh, 
you know, how do free agents work that are restricted? There's teams can provide them a qualifying offer. Other teams can provide offers as well. And then teams have the ability to match the offers of the other teams to keep the player. So let's start with the Suns restricted free agents. We have Dario Saric, who has a qualifying offer about $5 million, And we have Javon Carter, who has a qualifying offer of $1.9 million. Now, it's interesting to see if the Suns are actually going to make offers to these players if and when that time comes. I know that there's recent reports that Robert Sarver is interested in not spending money in this offseason, which makes sense during this mm-hmm. pandemic. Uh, but it's typical Sarver action. I think we'll get a little bit more to that in our overreaction corner. Uh, we've asked a million times back and forth, you know, since the pandemic started back in March as we explored the roster options. Uh, we asked a million times, should these guys be back next year? Yeah. Matthew, I'm going to ask you this. Will they bring these guys back? I think so. I think you have to. Um, but like you said, pre-pandemic, it was like the whole roster was up in the air. You had no idea what was going to happen. It was almost like pre-trade deadline. It was almost like you wanted to trade the whole team except for Devin Booker. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, since they played so well in the bubble, both Sarge and Javon Carter. I know Javon Carter played very well during the season, but had his ups and downs. But now it looks like both of them are going to have an offer reached out to them from other teams, and it's going to happen. So if the Suns are going to have to match them, they're probably going to have to pay them some decent money. But you're talking about some two guys that are going to play a good role off the bench, too. Like You, hit, you didn't have that option for a long time with this team. Now you have two guys, and hopefully Dario really sits in at that sixth spot coming off the bench if he can i'm giving these guys some money and i know that we want them to come back Mm -hmm. but i'm saying i think they're gonna come back and it depends to bring it back both yeah it it, it depends with um you know you just don't know how much money they can they can give given the off season just if the season ends today if if it ends after an actual nba championship right now then maybe it changes but right now i just i think that you have to give these guys this money because they helped us in a great way to support the, the to support the starting lineup in ways mm-hmm. that we haven't seen in forever. So I'm going to. Yeah, I mean, this offseason is going to be so unbelievably strange. And you really don't know that even if Dario Saric or Javon Carter gets uh, an offer from another team, what that offer is going to truly look like. We have no idea what the cap's going to look like. We have no idea as of yet, what those interests of the other teams are going to be. So even if somebody throws in a qualifying offer to a Javon Carter or to a Dario Saric, if they do that and the Suns have the ability to match, it's going to be really really interesting to see what the market value for those players are. I personally think that both will be back next year. I truly believe that the Suns uh, are going to do what they can to fortify that roster and fortify that bench, uh, especially because... You know, one thing that we talked about a lot pre-pandemic was the fact that the Suns uh, didn't know if they could get Dario Sarge to buy in to the fact that he would he is, could, should be a productive uh, bench player. He mm-hmm. wanted to be a starter. You know, once it, everything kind of came back online, they played him off the bench. And guess what? He fit that role great, and maybe he found a home here. You know, the rumors are that Dario Sarge is a fan of the weather here, which I don't understand. You know, I know <laughs> that he comes from – Uh, a climate uh, back home that is more like here versus Minnesota. So maybe that's Mm -hmm. something that's alluring. Uh, But I don't know. I mean, what what is it now? I think today was the 48th day over 110 in Phoenix this year in 2020. The previous record was 33. We've nearly yeah. beat that by two fucking weeks, dude. No, it, it's crazy. I mean, you don't, you, you really don't get used to it. You don't. And I had an Uber driver um, yesterday. I had to take me to work. Cause I had to leave my car at work the night before uh, for reasons I won't get into. Uh, nothing too spicy. But um, he was talking about, you know, you never get used to this weather because he wouldn't stop talking. But it's true. You really don't. You, you, but I think during the season, the weather's fine. The weather is great. Uh, right now, though, it's just like stay indoors and they're in a gym, you know, that they see going. So maybe that's what he's talking about. Great weather in there. I don't know. Yeah. So we'll we'll see if the weather's another reason that he'll choose us over another team if both offers are there. Because uh, I mean, well, I mean, we'll just we'll see. I think that's we're stuck in yeah. that realm. Uh, if the Suns have oh, one thing I did want to mention real quick, we know that Javon Carter wants to be here next season. That's another yeah. thing that's great. Yep. You know, we've talked about this in the past with restricted free agents and free agents, whether or not guys actually want to be here in Phoenix. You know, last year was the first time somebody rose their hand. Kelly Oubre is like, hey, 
I'm going to resign in Phoenix. I want to be here. I want to be a part of this. You look mm -hmm. at a recent Instagram story from Javon Carter, and initially, Mikkel Bridges had said on Twitter, I don't want to ever leave at Suns. And then Cameron Payne says, is it okay for me to say the same thing? And then on Javon Carter's Instagram story, he said, can I say the same thing? So you have three players there, two of who are on the roster for sure next season. Yeah. But three players who want to be here in Phoenix, man. Like, how exciting does that make you? Yeah, you're not used to it, right? And you just no. reminded me about Kelly Oubre last offseason wanting to do that. It's crazy because um, I can't remember before, before Kelly Oubre, it wasn't even like if they wanted to be here, but just, you know, their body language and stuff. You never had the greatest body language here in Phoenix. Now you do. Now you have players that want to play and – they, they see where the organization's going and you're going to get a lot of this now and it's going to be a great free agent market, I think. I've always thought, you know, like you have LA, you have New York, you have mm -hmm. like maybe Chicago places, Miami, but it's like, where, what's next for players? Where else would they want to go? I feel like Phoenix can sneak up there Absolutely. in a way, especially with the great weather, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as long as they're not here in this 112 bullshit every day. Yeah. But I mean, to that point, Scottsdale is a place that like Kevin Durant loves and has talked about it multiple times. Uh, we have somebody in the chat, Suns Geek. Thanks for joining us on the Suns Jam Session pod. And he says, Javon Carter has to come back. He's a solid defender, brings the energy and hustle the Suns need. Completely agree. I mean, that's one of the reasons that he's a fan favorite. It's one of the reasons that he's one of our favorites. And we want him back next season. And knowing that his qualifying offers just over or just shy of two million gives us if we can get him if the price is right and we can get him for another couple seasons on yes. that contract like that and with a pandemic going on and a cap that's going to be shrinking i mean that's a win 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 oh, win yeah. for the suns man i mean so for sure i i hope that they both come back i hope that the suns are have the ability to do so if they only bring back one which one do you think it is and why uh they would have to bring back well I think they're going to bring back Dario Sarge for, for sure, unless some team offers them ridiculous money. But to have a big come off the bench, and I know he can't play like the five very well courts because he's a little bit too small and he can't jump. Um, but besides that, I mean, he he's a guy that you want. Like he is everything you want to come off the bench. He is hustle. He is scoring. He can shoot the three. Hopefully he improves the three-point shooting. But besides that, like he can get the boards. He can push the ball. Uh, he can handle the ball. You saw that a lot in the bubble where he he can actually handle the ball down the court and even like start the offense too as well. I saw that a lot with him. So I think you got to take him just because you have Cameron Payne, but also Cameron Payne, man, like he's only going to be here for 2 million next year. Mm -hmm. and then Another great Javon, deal. Yeah. So you can, you, that extra money that you're making up with Cameron Payne, just give that to Javon Carter. But I'm saying that Sarge is going to come back for sure. Yeah. I think if it has to be between the two, that what's the best for the team on signing that re that uh, restricted free agent would be Sarich. Obviously, I want yeah. them both back, but what makes better sense for the team is bringing back Sarich if they had to choose between the two. Obviously, Sarich's contract is going to cost you more, but I think that he also puts forth more uh, effort towards this team and is better in the roster building and the construction of that roster uh, entering the draft. So we'll see what happens yeah. with with uh, the restricted free agents from the Suns, whether or not they bring them back. The other side of the restricted free agents that I want to talk about is the fact that there's other restricted free agents on other teams and not all of these guys technically will be re-signed with their teams. Uh, so I actually wanted to go through the list of restricted free agents on other teams. And I think I wanted to do it starting with a couple guys that's, that caught my eye. Sound good, Matthew? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So to do this, let's play a game. Okay. So for all of the, uh, for all of our Jamster listeners who are currently watching live on our live stream, we're going to play a game. It's going to be really simple. Okay. I'm going to pull up the stats for two different players from this past season. Now note that these are the per 36 stats makes it a little bit harder, especially if you know, you're Googling at home, trying to figure out who these two guys are. Whoever replies in the chat with the correct answer to who player a is and player B is, is going to win a prize. All right, Matthew, you want to tell them yeah. what that prize is? Two coasters. <laughs> With the Suns Jam logo on it, correct, right? <laughs> right there. No, it's our it's our Bobra lineup coasters yeah. for the winner who gets this right. Sound good? So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to oh, pull I up two. We're gonna split. Okay, we're giving the right. full pack. The okay. full pack. Wow, not just four two. coasters from <laughs> our Red Bubble. Um, site. Make sure you stop by there. You can purchase these if you want. But you know what? You can win them if you can answer us this question right here. Who is player A and who is player B? So player A, per 36 numbers, 18.8 points per game, 4.2 rebounds per game, and 4.2 assists per game. 
and shot 37.2% from three-point line last season. His qualifying offer next season from his team is $10.6 million. Player B, 18.3 points per game, 4.4 rebounds per game, 2.2 assists per game, and 38.8% from three-point land last year. The qualifying offer for that player, $3.9 million. So, Matthew, as mm-hmm. everybody's putting the comments in and trying to guess who those two players are for a chance to win some awesome uh, <laughs> Suns Jam session <laughs> memorabilia, so you put, so you can put your I- ice cold PBR on it. Tell me which one of those players you would prefer, player A or player B. Let's go, player A. And right. why is that? More points. You got to go with the more points, right? Points per game. You got the point five points per game. <laughs> no, these guys are very, very, um, very, very much the same. Um, so I'm going to go player A and player B. I think both of them look kind of a little bit. Of course, they're the same, but you got to assist a little bit more. I don't know. I'm going to go A and B. It's I always break the rules here. Yeah, dude. you never play the games right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's interesting about both of these players is the fact that they're completely different kind of players. Like they when are. I tell you who these players yeah. are, and so far nobody's got the uh, the correct players in the chat, uh, and I think it's probably because nobody wants our coasters. Um, it's interesting to see who they are. Player A is Bogon Bogdanovich. Player B is Malik Beasley, okay? So it's really kind of interesting to see the two guys because when you think of Bogdanovich from the uh, Sacramento Kings, he's somebody who, you know, you're like, okay, three-point shooter, somebody who the Suns actually drafted and dished, yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, as a part of the Marquise Chris <laughs> deal. Uh, and he's somebody who I'd really actually like on the Suns. Malik Beasley is somebody who I've never actually thought about as being a member of the Suns, but you take a look at his numbers, and you're like, you know what? He might be a decent addition to this team. So now that you know the names, which one, if they don't get the qualifying offer from their team, would you rather pursue? Well, it's like, which player would hurt the team the most, you know, leaving? And I'm going to go Bogdan, I think, or Bogdan, Bogdanovich. I don't know why I can't say his name right now. I'm going to go with him just because, especially if he's a guy that's going to come off the bench behind Devin Booker or anybody, if he's going to come in and help out with like the three, um, he's a guy you definitely want just because he's an automatic shooter from three. But then Malik Beasley, especially last year, really boosted up his stats you know he played the only the 14 games so after traded to minnesota but he had 20 points per game there but i don't know if that has a lot to do with the way minnesota was just a crappy team and then you know you can pile on those stats maybe that's why but i'm gonna go with the for sure thing where i'm gonna get bogdan bogdanovich where he's a difference maker on the floor i think he really is uh who do you choose out of the two it's tough because you know, Bogdanovich, both of them are, would be a great as a backup role for Devin Booker. It's something that we've definitely needed is continual scoring behind Booker. Even in the bubble, when we brought in Cameron Payne and Javon Carter, the focus was more on defense than offense. And I actually like that more. I prefer that we focus to a defensive stand uh, when we have our second team come in versus having yeah. offense dictate everything because that's how you can lose leads really quick, right? If you have a Bogdanovich coming in off the bench and he's shooting a you know a ton of threes, and all of a sudden that nine point lead is gone. And now Booker has to like kind of, you know, play from six behind. So me, Malik Beasley would be someone I would be interested in seeing as his price is better. And that's the only thing that really uh, affects the reasoning behind that. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this exercise is because you look at guys who have very similar stats. In fact, Malik Beasley is better from downtown. Uh, Bogdanovich is a little bit uh, better from an assist standpoint. And those were per 36 stats, of course. But Malik Beasley, if he doesn't get that qualifying offer from Minnesota, is somebody we could get for four to five million and would be a nice addition to the bench. I don't know if it's something that the Suns will pursue. Again, as we talked about, as we talked about our with our own uh, restricted free agents, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a you know a buyer's market this offseason. I don't know if Robert Starver is going to spend the money. Uh, I don't know if he should spend the money going into this offseason. So it'll be interesting. But I just thought that'd be a fun exercise to see what other restricted free agents on other teams look like. Mm-hmm. no it's good we got to get familiar with these guys because you know the way the free agent market works and especially the draft it's like we'll draft someone you'll never guess and also free agents will sign or do a trade with players we'll never expect so we got to know these guys you know we mm-hmm. got to oh yeah i remember that we talked yep. about it on sham session yes yeah, so time to start educating ourselves and our yeah. listeners so all right so let's look at some other restricted free agents that are going to be out there uh, a lot of these guys i figure are going to be f- Resigned by their own teams. Um, but I'm going to yeah. go through the list and you just tell me, should the Suns be interested in them? And do you think they'll be resigned by their team? Sound good? 
Yeah, let's go. All right. So the first, the biggest restricted free agent this offseason, in my opinion, especially if you look at total points per game production in 2019 slash 20, is the New Orleans Pelicans' Brandon Ingram. Is he going to be with the Pelicans next year, or they punted on Alvin Gentry? It's time to punt on Brandon Ingram and buy in completely on Zion. What are, what are your thoughts? No, no, yeah, he's getting resigned. That that would be a definite um, plus for the Suns if we got Brandon Ingram. That'd be insane to add a superstar like that. But he's going to be resigned. There's a reason that Gentry probably got fired. There's just something not working out. Brandon Ingram though was doing a lot of hero ball stuff in the bubble, and it wasn't really working out for the team. So maybe he had that was to though. Future. Yeah, I know it was just such a weird team, and everyone knew that kind of. But they were just hoping for the best because of the talent they had. But Brandon Ingram, I feel like he's going to resign. But I would love the Suns to have him. Instantly. Yeah, if I would. He he's like top five guys I want on the team, yeah. but. He's also like top five guys who won't be on the team because there's no way New Orleans is going to let him go. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they offer him a max contract going into the next season. So uh, yeah. Bogdan- Bogdanovich is number two on that list. And I'm going by points per game. It's how I sorted this. So Bogdanovich is number two. Beasley number three. Sarge is actually number four. He's the number four scorer from a restricted free agent standpoint. Mm-hmm. So another reason to sign him. DeAnthony Melton. <laughs> what do you think of DeAnthony Melton? <laughs> Bring him back. <laughs> No, no, of course not. We got Javon Carter now for that role. It's it's crazy though, because both players, you know, got the best out of both situations, right? Because DeAnthony mm-hmm. Melton actually did really well with the Memphis Grizzlies. He's happy there. They'll probably re-sign him. If not, um, I would not want the Suns to bring him back. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm okay with that. Uh Chris Dunn, point guard from Chicago, another guy who I just we don't need any more guards. You know, yeah, even, even as we talk about the draft, and we're gonna talk about Tyrese Halliburton here momentarily. But even there, it's like it's really tough to take a shot at a, another guard in the draft. Or, yeah, I mean, really, I'm sorry, in, in restricted free agency. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of guards, especially in the draft too. So you, it's just going to be piled high. And a lot of these free agents, I just, I don't know, especially point guard. We got our point guards, I feel like, especially on our team. So just resign the ones we have if we're going to do anything. Yeah, we know they fit within the confines of the system. Yeah. You look at uh, Denzel Valentine from Chicago. He's a shooting guard. Mm-hmm. He's a, mm-hmm. he's somebody who I'm I'm okay with. I've never been a huge fan of his game, but somebody who could contribute off the bench if we were to bolster that aspect mm-hmm. of uh, what our roster and what we need. And other than that, I don't have a lot of you know, really good free agents. Uh, I do like Dwayne yeah. Bacon. <laughs> yeah, I was just Dw- going to say. Yeah, Dwayne Bacon from Charlotte, man. Bring him oh, aboard. You, you like him or just the name? I love his I just- name. Yeah, what a great name, right? He, yeah, he, had a, board. he had a great game against the Suns early in the season. I do remember, yeah. like, their bacon was sizzling and all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. But yeah. those are some of the restricted free agents that are going to be out there this season. Uh, you know, again, I'll be really interested to see how this translates in this offseason. I just, I don't know what to truly expect from a restricted free agent standpoint, even from an unrestricted rate free agent standpoint. I know that that's going to be one of our upcoming podcasts is, and it's a lot more fun to do because there's just a lot more guys out there and there's a lot more freedom because they're unrestricted. Uh, you know, like the uh, Fred Van Vliet's of the world and things of that, uh, uh, you know, yes. realm, if you will. So it's, we'll, we'll see. And that'll be a fun podcast to go down. But I think it's time that we talk about some prospects. What do you think? Yeah, this is exciting because the more and more we look at these dudes, the more excited I get. So I told, see, see, I told you, man. See, what happens is we say trade the pick, trade the pick, trade the pick. And then we start doing our research. And now you're starting to like, you're like, you know what? There's actually some yeah, pretty, pretty happens. decent guys in this draft, you know? Yep. You want to keep the pick because you want to see one of these guys on your yeah. team. Yeah, you can see the fit with some of these guys, but well, I don't know. <laughs> let's let's get into these couple guys. All right. huh? So I, I wrote an article for Bright Side of the Sun. Uh, uh, I think it came out this morning, and I talked about something that I talked about in the last podcast or two podcasts ago, and that's long term greed and short term greed. And short term greed for the Suns is to go with the wing because I feel like that makes sense in the modern NBA. You can never have too many wings. Uh, it's a good safety net for the Kelly Oubre situation. Um, but then you look at the, uh, long-term greed and it, you, you go point guard. If you want long-term greed, you get one of these guys who's 19, 20 years old, yes. uh, has the ability to be about 22 by the time Ricky Rubio's contracts up It aligns with our timeline. Booker will be 26 by then eight. will be 24 by then, uh, Mikel Bridges, who I consider part of our core will be 26 by then as well. So if you want to take a shot with the number 10 pick, At a point guard, there are some good point guards in this draft who might even fall all the way to number 10. So, Matthew, how about you start us off with Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State? Tell me what you know about this guy. 
So first, I mean, watching him, maybe, what did I get? Like an hour and a half of YouTube footage in? And then there's a lot on this guy. There but is. First, first, I wanted to point out, though, I keep hearing that he's a very intelligent guy on and off the court. And it's just something where I feel like he can really help a team in that way. Just from having an IQ on the court is really big for me. I want someone that really knows the game right away. Age 20, he kind of he's past the age limit. He'll probably be 21 or almost 21 by the time he's drafted. Um, but honestly, he's a super thin dude. And he reminds me a lot of, it's weird, just kind of like Lonzo Ball in a way. Just his play. But if Lonzo Ball had like totally. a little bit more caffeine, like if Lonzo Ball was like, oh, like I'm going to stand up straight and like actually, you know. <laughs> it's try Lonzo to make, Ball with three dudes like, in him. Yeah, like Lonzo Ball looks a little bit lazy on the court. He's not lazy, but he just looks that way. His yeah, body lazy. lacks a daisy goal, yeah. Yeah, Tyrese is not Tyrese is not that way. Uh he I don't he seemed like a guy that can really get to the hole. I know he has not the greatest ball handling skills, but he can really finish around the rim. I like that a lot. And honestly, I think he'll be a special player. He seems like a guy that everyone's really picking, especially like Kevin O'Connor. And then today I was listening to Bill Simmons. He mm -hmm. says he likes him. So you got to watch out for that because that's what yeah. happened with Doncic. <laughs> you know, he, he said this, this is the guy. So I, I I enjoy this guy. I'm not too enthused by what I saw. I don't know. I don't really see the fit too much. But what do you think about this guy? I'm, I'm kind of with you there. And actually, uh, Big King Tuna 777 in the chat said Halliburton is more of an off-ball guard. And in watching the highlights, I completely agree with that. I mean, he's definitely got great court vision. He's somebody who it's exciting to watch his court vision. Uh, he's got that length. He's six foot five. So he's, it's like Devin Booker. And he's somebody who definitely has a hitch in his shot. It's not something sexy or something that I, yeah. I really like. Uh, but I can definitely see why there's a lot of hype around him. Uh, he did a lot with a little, I feel like. You know, you take a look at Tankathon, which is a great place to, you know, look at uh, stat strengths, stat weaknesses, things of that nature. It's also a great place to go and just watch it. They kind of put all the highlights together for you. So you don't have to search unless you just go down. You don't have Google at your house, right? So no. that's that's the best way to do is tank it on. Uh, but his only weaknesses, they said free throw rate and points. Uh, everything else is in the positive for this kid. And so, yeah. I mean, you can't ignore something like that. But you talk about fit with the Suns, and that's just I'm not 100% sure how I see him fitting with the Suns. You look at Kevin O'Connor's uh, draft guide on the ringer. And he says he's a genius playmaker who can make it, who can be a major building block of a contending team with shades of Sam Cassell and Shea Gilgus Alexander. So definitely a couple guys that I, you know, like, uh, but definitely a couple guys who I don't know if the Suns necessarily need moving forward, given the build of our roster. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, exactly. He's just a guy. I don't know. Just from watching him for the hours that I did, I just was like, I don't know. I don't see the fit too much right away, but maybe he'll evolve into something better than what I think. But um, yeah, I mean, Shea Gildress is a guy I love. Sam Cassell, I remember him playing, but not too much. So I don't know the comparison. Definitely remember well. Sam Cassell. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't as much, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. I mean, this guy might be joining the Suns. Who knows if he is, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, Flem on the radio. Oh, Flem oh. time. That's <laughs> Flem time. If he joins the Suns, then I want to be too upset though. I Sun, Sun Geek in the, the chat said, I was very big on trading the pick, but depending on what we do in the offseason and depending on how things look financially, the Suns might need to draft somebody and we can use all the talent we can get. And Suns Geek, Brandon, excellent point. Excellent yeah. point. You know, the That's draft true. is, especially the number 10 pick, it's a guaranteed 4.4 million. That's all you're paying for that number yeah. 10 pick. The beauty of being at number 10, not being the number one pick where you have to drop 10 million on a guy, you know? So yeah, we could, yeah, exactly, yeah. especially in this draft. So, and then we also have uh, Shannon Lissy from the chat who agrees with Matthew. So, she, yeah, yeah, Matthew, you got that going for you, which is nice. Yeah. Um, okay. Another another guy that I'm really big on, and you know, we talked about that's your long term greed guy, Tyrese Halliburton. That's also somebody. Uh, so says Jay from the Flame Fanning the Flames podcast. He spoke that into existence. He said well, the Suns are getting Tyrese Halliburton, so we'll see. Um, I like Killian Hayes more. I think he's more of a distributor. Uh, Ty Tyrese oh, Halliburton, yeah. you know? Yeah. We'll see. But the guy that I really like and the guy that I'm going to start covering here really quick is a guy who's probably not going to make it all the way down to the Suns. And it's unfortunate. A lot of mock drafts have him going number six, yeah. number five. And that is Florida State's Devin Vassell. Is it Vassell or Vassell? I think it's Vassell. It's tough because some... Vassell. It's yeah, Vassell. It's, it's yeah. like Sam Cassell Vassell. I know the last yeah, podcast I, I was hearing. named Vassell. Yeah. 
Um, but I'm a big fan of Devin uh, Vassell. And you look um, at just what he did at Florida State and his comp in the NBA. And he is, uh, it's Mikel Bridges-esque, man. It's really like eerie similar how Mikel Bridges looks on defense and with his length. But on offense, he's a, he's better than Mikel was, at least coming out of college. Uh, big Tuna, 777. Big King Tuna, 777. Vassell is the only guy I really want. Hayes is a project, but would be great too. That's why I think Devin yeah. Vassell, if he, if he drops all the way to the Suns, is somebody who we should really consider because he's less of a project, because he's somebody who could come in and instantly make an impact. KOC has him as one of the best defenders in this year's class with a developing offensive game that could make him more than just a shooter with shades of Chris Middleton, Robert Covington, and Matisse Thibel. You can never have too many wings in the NBA, man. And I really, like, the more I do the research, and yeah. I like some of these point guards, but the more we do the research, the more I like these wings man i think there's some really solid wings in this draft oh yeah man i think well starting with devin vassell <laughs> that's vassell no vassell, vassell, vassell yeah whatever it's uh yeah i'm liking it too with these wings as well and it like as soon as i watch this guy like it, he popped off the screen he seemed like an instant um a, instantly a good player in the nba like he mm -hmm. can just he'll grasp things quickly and he looked like he had a pretty decent offensive game i know like they're talking about his offensive game has to improve but from what i saw it looked pretty good of course it's just the good highlights but it's, it's stuff you can build on i think um i think it's easier too in the nba tell me if i'm wrong is it easier to improve your offensive game or defensive game because i feel like i love these players that come in that are this like him where he's yep. athletic he's a defender and he's also, just a guy I feel like that can develop an offensive game. Is it easier, you think, nowadays to, to develop the offensive well, game? I see it a lot, I feel like, now. Absolutely, because the NBA is more geared towards offense. I think that if you come in with a defensive mindset and a defense, uh, uh, a defensive high, de a de high defensive IQ and defensive capabilities, yeah. you know, you're going to grow on that, but that's part of your instincts. That's Mikel Bridges. Mikel Bridges came in as a, a premier defender, I mean, maybe not premier, yeah. but an above average defender. And he's developing his offensive game, and we're seeing that. Versus a lot of these guys that we're looking at, when you go and you watch the highlights, it's all offense. It's great passes, a dunk, three, three, three. Very few of them have defensive highlights. That's what makes Devin Vassell so fun to watch in his highlights because he's blocking guys, he's he's fronting guys in the post, and then making the steals. I mean, it's really uh, – he, he's the guy I'm highest on so far. We've done now four total guys that we've really kind of taken a deep dive into. We've looked at Killian Hayes. Um, who else did we look at? Who's the... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Aaron, Aaron Nesmith. Aaron, Aaron Nesmith from uh, Vanderbilt. I liked him okay. too because I like all the wings, but I liked him too, but he doesn't have nearly the, the defensive capability that uh, Devin Vassell has. No. And then you have two Devons on the team. I mean, how great is yeah. that, right? But th I'm telling you, this guy, this is who I'm rooting for right now. This is the guy I want coming off the bench with the Suns. He just has that it like that that look on the court. He has the look I'm looking for. Like it's kind of like you just see it in these players. Like it's like this SGA thing where I could see not just me, but anybody could see this guy. He's gonna do good. He's gonna do great mm -hmm. in the NBA, I think. And it's someone, dude. I, I this is my number one guy so far from these reviews. Yeah, so on our next podcast, we'll we'll talk about a couple other guys. But what's unfortunate is you look at a couple different places, and I wouldn't say unfortunate because it's all speculation and bullshit, and it's coming from Bleacher Report, so you <laughs> you know that yeah. it's probably not that good. But they had a one article that was the best landing spot for each projected uh, lottery pick, and they mm -hmm. said the San Antonio Spurs were the best landing spot for Devin Vassell, which is like he they, they draft af after us at number eleven. But if yeah. he goes to San Antonio, I will be pissed and then no, they also had like. what's that he'll go to a team we don't like someone in the west that's the way these players they'll, they'll always get drafted by the play are the teams we hate you know i know they don't go to the eastern conference they stay in <laughs> our conference just to <laughs> fucking just fuck with here. us uh but they also bleacher report gave a comp of devon sell to what nba player mikhail bridges so bridges. i mean Very imagine nice. having Imagine having two Mikael Bridges on our team. Yeah, but this guy, I feel like he already has a confidence already. Sorry, mm -hmm. I know Mikael, he's a great player, but this guy seems like he already has a confidence on the court. No, without a doubt. And I'm, we'll see what happens. We got two more months. I think on our next podcast, we're going to hit another point guard, another wing, uh, and just kind of continue going down the line and taking a look at a lot of the guys because there's a lot of ninja picks out there too. I mean, this is also could be a draft where when we talk about trade the pick, maybe trade the pick means trade down. 
maybe we get to number 14, you know, and Boston wants somebody at number 10 and we could gain another asset or a draft pick out yeah. of it. And we could still have one of these really solid wings. So a lot of uh, opportunities for the Suns and a lot of different strategies that James Jones has to deploy, whether it be keeping re uh, specific restricted free agents, signing unrestricted free agents, navigating the draft. Yeah. It's a job I don't envy, my friend. Uh, just no. so you have an idea of who Are Sam you know? Cassell was, we have Nathaniel Lamar Williamson in the chat. He said Sam Cassell was a baller. Nice game in the paint, back in the bas back to the basket game. What annoyed me about Sam Cassell the most when he played was his pump fake, because he would get you in the air every goddamn time before it was cool to pump fake. Like yeah. Sam Cassell's been pump faking before it was cool to pump fake. See, I wish I was around more with the uh, '90s basketball. You know what it was I was a good there. Time. Not conscious, really. Well, it's time for a new segment, Matthew. Let's do it. Let's see what let's, you got. Let's overreact. The Sun's Jam Session. Overreact. Is that Shannon yeah. Lissy? <laughs> yeah, no, that was me. <laughs> that was you? Is that that Shannon Lissy? Uh, no, that wasn't. She was too busy today. Oh, okay. All right. So this is the Suns Jam Session overreacts. And this is where we're just going to overreact about some things that are going on in the NBA playoffs and in the Suns world. Uh, let's overreact about Robert Sarver willing to spend money this year. Overreact, Matthew. Go crazy. Wait, is that something that's going to happen? <laughs> that's that what like he said. That, 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 that's what's reported, that Robert Sarver said he ain't spending any fucking money this offseason. Oh, really? Yeah, man, see, I didn't even you've been working that, way too much. Yeah, I have, man. You know what? Um, I don't believe anything he says, so I, I'm just going to leave this one up to you, man. You overreact on this one. All right. I'll overreact on this one, okay? Uh, good. Don't, don't overspend Robert Sarver. This ain't the season for it. We have a good solid team that we just had in the bubble. Have James Jones do what he can to fortify that team without going crazy. Yeah. Uh, Gian Giannis Antetokounmpo is available next off season. I'm not saying the Suns could go get him, but you know what? The Suns could potentially go get him. The way that the roster is built right now is beautiful. If you think about it after next season, only, I believe Aiton and, Booker on the books. Bridges, I think, is a team option. I'm not 100% sure. If not, that's three players that are on the books. The Suns and James Jones have done a fantastic job of not falling prey to any of those crazy fucking contracts that are out there. And if they did, like the Tyler Johnsons, they dished them off, okay? That's the beauty of Kelly Oubre's contract. Oh, Ricky Rubio, he's also on the books at the end of yeah. uh, next season. So we are primed to make a move, and we don't necessarily need to make a move this offseason. So... I did see Sun's Twitter and Sun's Facebook uh, pages, you know, oh, Sarver's being cheap, typical Sarver, all this shit. This ain't the time to go spend, man. No, it's not. And that was not, that was a perfect reaction, not too much of an overreaction by you. Honestly, I just think it's something that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's something that a lot of teams are going to try to do because you have Giannis. You know, he's going to be a free agent. There's going to be a why, lot of other great free agents, why, yeah, too. No, but why spend any money? This Just resign your guys that helped you go 8 0 in the bubble. Mm -hmm. Do that, have a good season, make the playoffs next year. And then if you can show that potential, if we can get to the playoffs next year, and then, hey, there's Giannis. Exactly. So I think that I agree with Suns Geek. I trust James Jones and Monty Williams. I do yeah. too right now. Okay, I, I do I too. Do, we, for, yeah. do we need to make the playoffs next year? Absolutely. Oh, do we have the capability yeah. to make the playoffs? Absolutely, man. DeAndre Ayton was suspended for 25 fucking games. Ricky Rubio had a child midseason, was out for like a couple weeks, and then didn't really – play well the next two weeks after that like yeah. papa ricky papa was ricky. up late at night man you know he's like oh, my son he's a yeah. he's uh, keeping me up late at night you th those things don't happen we're in the fucking playoffs this year so i mean oh, I so i'm i'm not going to overreact on the fact that robert sarver said he might be a little cheap this offseason settle down sons fans uh you look at the the playoffs themselves and obviously mm -hmm. we spoke at the beginning of the podcast pertaining to the fact that they're not playing tonight but what are your thoughts on the Sixers after being swept by Boston in the first round? Well, after um, Ben Simmons, when he was gone, I just knew it. They, I didn't think it would be a sweep, but I thought they would lose, of course. The thing is, I, you can't count on Embiid to be the main guy. Like, he, he's, he's fucking great, or freaking great. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. But honestly, <laughs> I, I think that he just needs a full team around him. This whole team, it's kind of like the Pelicans – in the West, where Pelicans have a great roster, but they can't get it together. This is the 76ers. They had to do something to where they had to fire Brett Brown, so he's gone. Yep. So that was one of the things I feel like had to happen. But you got to keep Ben Simmons in Embiid together. After this sweep, 
don't trade them. I mean, if you're going to trade them, trade them to the Suns, one of them, but don't <laughs> trade. Like, you got to keep these guys together. There's a way you can make this work. Well, that's my that's, own reaction. <laughs> you properly reacted on that one, Matthew. Well, I think, like, I, I, I want to go against you just to be an ass. Be like, no, man, blow it up. Blow it up. Fuck the sixes. Blow it yeah. up. No, you but El Elton Brand yeah. said that they're not going to try to dish Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid as well they shouldn't. I think that, yeah. you know, we were literally just talking about how the Suns have done such a great job with their contracts. You want to talk about a team that dumpster fire when it comes to contracts? Look no further than the Philadelphia 76ers. Embiid, Simmons. Makes sense, right? Tobias Harris's contract, Josh Richardson's contract. They're all like long-term, four-year, like 20-plus million dollar deals. If they want to do yeah. anything, they need to do... The first thing they did right was get rid of Brent Brown. Like, that's the first thing you have to do. Like, that guy... I've never seen a coach look so lost in the playoffs. He's just, I mean, he he was in the bubble, and I don't think he knew that he was in a bubble. He was, he, I feel like he was looking around for fans the whole time. I was like, but they're Is on he the a drunk looking coach. There's a oh, lot what? of coaches that look drunk. I think he's crossed the line to where, like Donnie Nelson, he said, always look drunk on yes. the sideline. I think he's kind of disheveled. Maybe, yeah. maybe he's boozing in the bubble. Has a little bit of spit up on his chest hair. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Especially when it came to Don Nelson, man. He's always disheveled, like his ties like over on the side. Yeah. Uh, but but I think that Elton Brand did the right thing by doing that. The next thing is they got to get rid of the Tobias Harris contract. And yeah, but when but he I mean, signed, though, a lot of a lot of teams wanted him, and that was the money he was gonna get. I remember the Suns. Well, but I exactly. So 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 dish him. Yeah, I know exactly. Now you do, but yeah, it's just crazy. You can't win with that talent, but you got to keep. You got to. We agree, though, right? You got to keep Embiid and Ben Simmons. You can't just blow it up. You know what I mean? If, There's if no I was the Sixers fan, I would say, "Hell no, don't blow it up." I love both these guys. Yeah. That's like saying that, that that that's like the Suns going to the playoffs three years in a row with Booker and Aiton, and they don't win because Booker's Jury's out, and then, and then a and last shot to send yeah. you home. Like come on, like you got to keep it together. Yeah, guys. Kawhi Leonard getting oh, a lucky bounce. Yeah. I kill for this stuff right now. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I would kill to be in the playoffs. Yeah. All right. So let's overreact on this. The Clippers gave up Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, the Miami Heat 2021 unprotected first round draft pick, Clippers 2022 unprotected first round draft pick, Miami Heat 2023 first protected one through 14. So a lottery pick, the right to swap the 2023 first round pick with the Clippers. The Clippers 2024 unprotected first round draft pick, the right to swap the 2025 first round draft pick with the Clippers, and the Clippers 2026 unprotected first round draft pick. Okay. OKC gave up Paul George. Who yeah. won this trade? Well, honestly, I'm going to go. We're going to do two different sides here. We're going to go at each other on this one. So I'm going to overreact and say um, the Clippers got the best of it. I really think they do because you can't really trust tr uh, uh, draft picks. As much. I know you can trade them away and That's stuff. That's a but you, shit ton of draft picks. I know it is, but you can't count on these players in the draft. Thanks for the close-up. To You can't rely on them. You just can't. I mean, from a Suns fan, you have to know that. But honestly, I think the, what the Clippers did with Paul George, it makes sense. You have to bring him in with Kawhi Leonard, of course. But the thing is, too, the Clippers have never looked this good ever. They, you're, they're a title favorite, right? From you. Mm -hmm. They're your title favorite. Oh, yeah. So they got that They're way my from guys. getting Paul George. If there was no Paul George, I know he was sneaking a, a little bit in two games. And no one really talks about that because of the whole Luka Doncic, we'll get into it a little bit later. But he he even came out over after the game, just said he was in a dark place. And yeah. he a lot of stuff was going on. He couldn't get himself ready to go. So then now I'm just like, well, is that a guy you want on your team, giving up that many assets? I know it was like a thing where the mental health thing is a big issue. Oh, do you hit a fire hydrant? Yeah, what, what the hell? Going? Jeez. I, I live Are you in Portland fire. right now? Yeah. Jeez. But anyway, I don't even know what I was saying. But I'm gonna go for the. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. Clippers. So you're saying Clippers won the trade? Yeah, See, I think they did. I I wrote this they question before play. last night's game, and and playoff P finally showed up for the first time in the playoffs. But I get what you're saying. They they don't get Kawhi Leonard without Paul George. So the Clippers technically win the trade. But I think if I was a GM. And OKC is playing pretty damn well in the bubble. <laughs> They've got assets up the asset. I think OKC wins this trade, man. Short-term greed, long-term greed, right? The short-term greed move is what the Clippers did. They're like, we want to win now. We want to get a championship. And you know what? Kawhi's on what, a two-year deal? Like, yeah, if they so don't win in two years, yeah, and then, and then he's gone. Two, two years in a row. Yeah, boom, they, boom, they, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, if they if they win one, I think it's well worth it because you don't know how these players are going to turn out in the draft. You just don't. So, yeah, but you can use those draft picks to go get somebody else. I know they already have those guys. This is it. They have these players in their prime. Yeah, but this is like a 2026 unprotected first, and all the picks are unprotected. There's one lottery pick that they there. It's like okay, yeah. the Miami Heat pick. We're gonna we're gonna lottery protect that one, but everything else is either a under or a unprotected pick or a, a pick swap. It's just unbelievable. In like I just I guess I never really realized how much the Clippers truly gave up to get Paul George there. Yeah. But I think in the long run, it's clearly the wrong move. If we, if you and I are sitting here doing this podcast in three years and I ask you that same question, you'll be like, yeah, okay. So you won that trade. No, it's not going to happen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's overreact on this. Toronto <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you can't overreact on it, man. Toronto's fucking amazing, man. Yeah, they're, this, they're this team is a, it, what's that? Got that confidence, that championship confidence. Yeah, totally, man. I mean, you, what what did their bench score the other night? A hundred points. The first time a bench has scored a hundred points in a in a game since 1971. It's unfucking believable yeah. how good Toronto is and how nobody talks about them. Yeah, it's like playing these playoff games is basically like taking a bubble bath for these guys. They just seriously easy as cake. <laughs> it is. It's well, that's why I said in the beginning if they're like the scariest team. I do not want to play along with um. Who else did I say? There was someone else. Oh, Miami, Miami Heat. Yeah. Miami Heat. That's another team so. that's scary, but I, I don't think we're really truly overacting by saying that they're amazing, but I feel like they don't get enough credit. They're just kind of doing their thing and nobody cares because they don't really have yeah. that big name star. You know, Kyle Lowry's not really a big name star. He's kind of an annoyance to people. Pascal Siakam, half the people can't say his name right. You know, yeah. Fred, Fred Van Vliet, everyone, you know, messes up his last name too. So it's just, I think that Toronto's unbelievably amazing and they're, like low key, like my favorite team in the Eastern Conference now. Oh, I yeah, just, I, they're, sure. I love their jerseys too. I'm a big jersey guy. So yeah, they've, they've done great with their style for a while. So nothing well, too bad. Well, well, speaking of style, if you look in the the chat from Suns Geek, as somebody who has a huge hat collection, he loves our hats, Valley Boys. Yeah. <laughs> so we're both rocking. We're actually rocking some. Uh, for those of you who are watching on the live stream, we got our our '93 Sunbursts. Look, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, you can't see it. And that section was actually really this boring the, for you. The only hat I have for the Suns right now. Isn't that crazy? I can't find my other ones. Really? Yeah. We should probably. Uh, yeah, you, We, we <laughs> got to do something about that, Matthew. We got to get you some more hat game. Some All right, here money. we go. The last overreaction. Got to do Matthew, it. Matthew, Luca, thoughts? Yeah. Oh, dude, amazing. The, the thing is with him, I, I get home at night. Whenever I get home, and I want to watch Luka Doncic play, it's it's insane how much I want to watch this guy play. Uh, the whole thing with him not being drafted by the Suns, I mean, I've moved past it. I'm done with it. My thing was, you can't have Doncic and Booker play together in the future. You can't. It would have been fun for the time being, but in the future, if you want to win championships, I don't think it would have happened. Um, so that was just my thing with Doncic. But honestly, I enjoy watching him, and I think that for not just to do what he's doing and the way I think the draft is viewed, the way I view the draft and how free agents are signed, I think everything spreads across the NBA now. So if Doncic wasn't with the Mavericks, we wouldn't have that great head to head Doncic versus Booker. And I think mm -hmm. that's something we're going to see in the future for a long time. Booker versus it's not Doncic versus Aiton. It's Doncic versus Booker. Like you can't have it any other way. Those guys are going to go at it for a long time. I'm excited about it. And it's whoever wins the championship first. Let's see who wins it first. And hopefully it's the Suns. Yeah. It's a race <laughs> to the championship. And you know what? He got a head start because uh, his guys were injured all season like ours were. Yeah. Luka Doncic, you nailed it, man. He's fun to watch, man. Like, if you like basketball, then you should appreciate watching Luka Doncic. You should appreciate watching uh, LeBron James and James Harden and Russell Westbrook and Dame Lillard. I mean, that's why we love basketball is to watch great basketball. Uh, can you not like guys on other teams because they're those teams are your rivals? Absolutely. Basketball that's, basketball hate. Yeah, that's basketball hate, you know, but there's also a level of respect. Kobe Bryant's a great example. I was actually uh, at uh, GameStop today and I was putting my pre order down on NBA 2K21 and they were asking me if I wanted the Mamba edition. Now, the Mamba mm -hmm. edition is the $100 one and it's obviously got Kobe Bryant on and it comes with yeah. a bunch of little stuff. And he's like, Do you want it? And I was like, No. He's like, Well, 
I mean, it's got this, it's got that. It comes with like Kobe commemorative coins. He's like, why not? I'm like, I'm a Suns fan, dude. Like, I respect Kobe all day long, always did, but I couldn't fucking stand him because he played for the opposition. So if people are approaching Luka Doncic that way as Suns fans, I'm totally for that, man. Like, he's the opposition, but he's never done anything to the Suns other than we didn't draft him. The Suns are five and one against him. Like, yeah. we own five the Mavericks. Four. Five and one. They won one game, I think, when okay. Aiton was out. But, but, I respect his game. I enjoy watching it. That game winner over uh, the Clippers the other night was super fun to watch, man. It's just good basketball. Oh, I gotta great. give I gotta give props to Suns Twitter. They handle Luca playing well so much better than those Suns Facebook pages. So if you're watching this on Suns fa Facebook, uh, thank you for doing so. But Suns Nation, uh, Phoenix Suns Nation, like all these different Facebook groups, it's really a different conversation. Than the Twitter verse, you know, the Facebook pages are there's threats, you know, uh, there's a lot of dick sucking comments like go suck Luca's dick. It's like, really? Like the mods are getting involved to break up feud. It's, it's truly ridiculous how people on Facebook hate Luka Doncic because other people make arguments similar to ours. Like, Hey, it sucks. He's not on our team. Yeah. I could say that about 20 other players in the NBA, but you know what? It's a fun watch. And they're like, you're an idiot. You're not a Suns fan. I, I don't, yeah. you know, it, it's a bunch of hate speech almost. So it's, I, I, yeah. I like the Twitter pages because they're more along the damn, he's good. Wish we drafted him, but you know what? We have eight and that ain't bad mindset. And I appreciate that about the Twitter verse uh, when it comes to the Suns because it's just been very interesting <laughs> watching well, yeah. those conversations on Facebook. The worst part, though, is just you have to keep hearing from the past and McDonough and all these lies about why we didn't draft him why we took Aiden all this. It's like, come on, you know why we took Aiden is the safer pick. You never know how you didn't know how Luca was going to turn no. out. Like, oh, it was Kevin O'Connor and Bill Simmons. Well, Kevin O'Connor had Aiton and Luca 1A, 1B, like seriously, days before the draft until draft night where he's like, oh no, Luca should have been one number one. So it's just like you you couldn't take the chance with him. We know what we're going to get in Aiton. We just didn't know what we're going to get in Luca, which yeah. is fine. But would you? So my whole Booker and Luca thing, it's like you can't draft Luca if you have Booker. It kind of makes sense. But it's like, would you draft LeBron James if you already have Kobe Bryant? Could you have those two playing together? No. Yeah. You'd, so you'd probably go for fit with the team. What works best around Kobe Bryant? Yeah, exactly. So Booker's Kobe, and then Doncic. Yep. My comparison is always LeBron James. Yeah. Six I, eight, I yeah. don't know if you can draft them. I, you just can't. It doesn't work out. Name one team that has two alpha males on the same team, like two, two superstars that are working besides Paul George and the Kawhi Leonard. But Paul George is a secondhand guy. He is. He shows yeah, you from a bubble. personality standpoint, that's the way he is. Yeah. He doesn't he want to can. be the alpha. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, but yeah, that's it for now. Next week, uh, Luca part two or <laughs> part, part 50. <laughs> well, we don't have any dumb trade of the weeks, which is nice. Although we could probably uh, just talk about how the Minnesota fans are still trying to talk us into trading Booker for their entire franchise. Uh, yeah. But I'm not going to go that route. Don't got time for it. Uh, we only have one mailbag question currently, but if anybody's interested in uh, submitting a mailbag question, there's a couple different options for you. You can go to sunsjamsession.com or you go to sunsjamsession at gmail.com and send it to us. Uh, or you can pop a question in the, the chat and we will answer any questions you might have currently. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, Boyd from Australia just popped in. He's just, uh, fuck, I'm late. <laughs> I love you, Boyd. Hope everything's going good down there. Uh, for you. Um, so we look at our mailbag question that we have for this week. This comes from Shilpa Dehape, and he says, start, bench, cut, trade, best point guards after Nash left. Ooh, that's tough, Matthew. You ready? So you get to start one, bench one, cut one, trade one. Bledsoe, Rubio, IT, Dragic. Dragic. Okay. Dra so, Dragic. Dragic. There you go. Yeah. There you go, Dave. Sorry. I always fucked that up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Matthew? Uh, I think we're probably going to be pretty much the same on this. So I'm going to start Rubio for sure. Bench Dragic. And then also I'm going to, I think I'm just going to trade Bledsoe. But no, I don't know. Because we didn't really trade these guys for anything, which sucks. No. But uh, So it's like, so just trade Bledsoe and get back nothing. And then cut Isaiah Thomas. Because if you trade him, you get back nothing. So I'm just going to do that. But um, I would have traded Bledsoe because you could have got a lot more back from him than what the Suns did. So I would have I would have done that for sure. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Man? Um, I'm gonna start Dragic, Dragic. 
I'm going to start the dragon. I'm going to bench Rubio. I'm going to cut Bledsoe because I still have spite, spite in my heart. And I'm going to trade Isaiah Thomas. Why? Because I can. <laughs> what? Papa, 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 Papa. Eh, he'd be good coming off the bench. I think that, you know, he's 30 now. Of course, you know, Goran, when he was with the Suns, was younger. And he was just, he was a lot more spry. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that was a tough question, dude. That, that is those, well. Those two, yeah. Well, uh, we appreciate the the question. Um, what else you got, Matthew? You got any, any watching anything new? What's uh, what's going down? No, nothing new. Just working. That's it. You're working your that butt is, off, man. Yeah, gotta 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 make that money, you know. Yeah. To support this live stream, it's causing me a bunch of money <laughs> well here comes a question from sons geek he says highly unlikely this happens but would you guys like to see brett brown alvin gentry or nate mcmillan as one of the sun's assistant coaches oh. next year the sons have two open coaching spots that's a fantastic say, question i would say um alvin gentry or nate mcmillan like i i was surprised nate mcmillan was fired i yeah, really should have overreacted to that yeah, because yeah we should add that in that happened today right or was it yeah. yesterday but um yeah, so my bad. We should add that in because honestly, I mean, that Pacers team really overachieved. I like their team. I thought they were going to do well this season, but a lot of people did not. A lot of people thought they just weren't there, but he got that team to play, dude, especially the emergence of TJ Warren, dude, even though he didn't show up in the playoffs. Like, mm -hmm. he had all of that. It's just, it's crazy to me. I know, I think it's five first round exits, right, in a row for. Yeah. Yeah, but any of those two dudes, I, I would love to have them on the, on the staff. Well, here, I'm going to drop it. The Sun's GM session overreacts. Come on, Pacers. Give Nate McMillan more of a chance. You have a great foundation. You got a nice looking team there. So what if he got swept in a bubble when Victor Oladipo isn't playing as well as he normally does? You're without Sabonis. TJ Warren's your MVP. You guys are ridiculous for letting Nate McMillan go. To answer uh, Sun's GM. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like, two coaches got fired from the bubble. Like, from the bubble, like what yes. happened in the bubble? I think it's crazy. I don't think you could put any money on what was happening in the bubble, dude. No, I, you can't. I mean, it's such an odd situation. And Brett Brown, I can kind of see. But even then, like you're without Ben Simmons. I mean, I just, it's tough, man. It's tough to have those guys lose their jobs uh, over performance in a bubble with guys who had injured superstars on their team. It just doesn't make any sense. But to answer Suns Geek question, if I could bring anyone onto this team, I'd probably bring Nate McMillan. Uh, Alvin Gentry's already kind of done his time here. I don't know how that relationship is with Sarver, nor do I really care. Uh, and Brett Brown, I don't want any part of. Yes. All right. Good answer. Good. What have Thank you been you. up to? Though? I feel like uh, you always ask me. And I never ask you back. Oh, what, what are you? What are you? Besides golfing every day, Thank what you, have you well, been up to? Well, I love golfing today. Uh, it was hot. That's why I bitch about the heat because I'm out in it golfing all the time because. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. Uh, it's nice. It's outdoors. Uh, I'm kidding. It's not nice. <laughs> My game's not nice either. Um, I'm getting ready to go watch Meredith for Sight right after this. I don't know if you've heard of the show, but it's... Uh, what's what that? What happened? Wait, stop the presses. Is this yeah. a brand new season? Yeah, man. The honeymoons are over, man. Oh, shit. Oh. Shit's about to get real out there right now. Once I've been yeah. in here, I'm, I'm going in there. The TLC app right now. I'm going to start watching that. It's a good show. It's a good show. But other than that, you know, just kind of... <laughs> Uh, you know, got this, uh, the legendary shirt there from, uh, the sun shop. That's from the sun solar panel guys. They had a designer make this one. So, uh, it looks like it's, I like it. I like it. It's good. I like it too. <laughs> uh, and if anybody's interested in purchasing any design stuff by the sun's jam session crew, make sure you stop by redbubble.com. Uh, we got some different things going on there. I graphic design is one of those things I kind of do on the side. So, uh, we appreciate any support you might provide, to the podcast we truly appreciate it uh we appreciate all the listeners for hanging out with us matthew you got anything else uh before i drop all the the good information the housekeeping notes nope that's it just uh, uh go ahead get, John. yeah get your face out of the way then all right remember to <laughs> subscribe to the podcast press the little subscribe button below hit the bell so you, every time we come on you get to know that we're uh we're on uh, if you're listening on the bright side of the sun podcast network Make sure you subscribe as well. You get not only us, but you get Family in the Flames. Make sure that you hit us up on Twitter at Suns Jam. Go to sunsjamsession.com, and again, you can hit up uh, Redbubble as well. So, uh, Matthew, that's all I really have. Time for another beer, my friend. All right. Everyone go home and love your family. Amen. Take care, everybody.